on the record button. Uh, how are yeah. you doing, Kat? I'm doing okay, but um, I have a lot to do at the moment. You know, like obviously my album comes out next yeah. next week. Business schedule, yeah. Yeah, so there's been lots to do. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but um, the singles are so far uh, look I, are amazing. By the way, I can't wait for the full album. Uh, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're amazing. And okay, so. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, uh, start with a like, question that is uh, rather heavy in content, but oh. I guess it can be fun uh, to discuss it with, if, if you bear with me, because it is a long question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your music, uh, I feel like is often a like, rather somber exercise on the beauty and as well as pain of life, but it is also often shaped by somewhat uh, memories or at least some kind of uh, abstract yearning for the past if I'm if I'm expressing it right uh, which I feel resonates with modern life as well uh, as people are often inclined to reimagine and revisit history in some way and I'm talking about a, a variety of scales here like be it the blockbuster reboot films of Hollywood cinema or, or uh, like our individual artistic efforts like any, in any area really For instance, like a couple of friends and I are starting a fanzine here in Istanbul, and we decided that one of our main goals is to become children again in spirit, nice. which yeah, which recalls to the theme of your latest single, by the way, spoiled oh. children, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, it it just connected in my memory, uh, like all 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 of this seems to be connected sometimes. So I guess my question is, um, do you believe? There is a collective age of nostalgia of sorts, or, and if so, where do you yourself stand in this frame? Mm. Um, oh, okay. Let me think. I I would say maybe there is a little bit of nostalgia for uh a time i mean i guess i guess you know as you get older we all look back to when we were kids and things were a lot simpler you know and may i feel like i don't know what it's like with you but i feel like over the past couple of years everything's become very political certainly in berlin people here are are you know doing a lot more I mean, Berlin, it's always been a very protesty, activisty kind of place, but but it feels like a lot more people are kind of, you know, understanding what injustice is in the world and, you know, the, the separation between rich and poor. And I think maybe because of this, there is a nostalgia to return to um, a place where things such as play, creativity, joy um, have, have a place to exist and are celebrated. So if you're making a, a, you're making a zine about childhood, I think this is also about, you know, maybe, maybe as adults, we, we don't have the same amount of room for, for play and joy that that we used to have and and this is this is a pity and this should be a part of our lives you know what's crazy i actually bought a zine like three months ago that was about play wow it was made in the uk i wish i had it here i would show it to you and it's yeah uh, anyway but yeah. cool that you're doing that uh, and yeah uh, and with the uh, you saying it's political times yeah, i feel it's felt all around the globe right now mm. uh, with, with uh, like, like there's neo-fascist regimes uh, but there's also like protests going on and people uh, realizing some stuff that uh, and I'm talking about all kinds of people people who weren't political before like yeah uh, yeah and I we feel it here in Istanbul as well I guess in Turkey as well and so uh, yeah I, I I really get uh, I think I get what you're saying cool So you just mentioned an, an item, a, a zine you bought in Istanbul, uh, and 
weirdly enough, uh, I have a question about items in my list. So can you specifically name it like tangible, like nostalgic item that guided your upcoming album somehow? Ooh. Um. Oh, I don't know if I can. I have to really think about it. I mean, I have to say, I did. I, I have been buying. Re, I have been reading zines the past year, and actually, I'm also making a zine at the moment, which yeah. I'm going to bring out later in the year. But it's more of a political zine. Okay. But um, uh, I would. I think as a nostalgic thing, I don't know if I could say this, but is it? Could you say that? I, f I feel like, you know, in this sort of, in our internet social media age, um, something that I started to do again, which I I realized, I didn't realize I'd stopped doing, but uh, reading fiction, mm -hmm. you know, I, in a way, I mean, maybe that's not so amazing, but, you know, I think, um, you know, when I was younger, I read books all the time. I read fiction all the time. I was always inspired by it as, you know, as an artist, as a songwriter, um and somewhere over the years I, I i stopped doing that you know just reading for pleasure mm -hmm. um so i don't know if that's the answer you were looking for but I, I i feel like there's for me there's a nostalgia in 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 doing something that like that also because it's an activity that is completely unproductive you know there's so much pressure to be productive, to create, to produce, to post on the web, you know, just to do something completely unproductive, I think is also kind of nostalgic. I, I see, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, by the way, like, um, how much of a time period did the album take in the making, by the way? Um, like, maybe two years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but I hadn't, uh, yeah. Since the beginning of the pandemic, something like that. Yeah, yeah I started before the pandemic oh, okay. and I finished it. I finished the album about six months ago, but the pandemic gave me more time to develop things and to write a few extra things. Um, yeah, there's a song on the, at the end of the album called Natural Resources. And I, and I wrote that, you know, just just before. Yeah, yeah, very, I mean, very recently, just before I had to hand in the album. So, yeah. Is it as political as the title implies? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's about, you know, resources uh, in the environment and exploitation, you know, all, all the fun stuff, all the fun stuff, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, all the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, uh, obviously, I haven't heard the whole album yet, but um, you know, expressed that uh, you uh, like. Uh, of course, I already feel it in the or the release re release singles, but um, like it, it is, it's it's a huge uh, cons it is a huge like it has huge arrangements in sound, like orchestral arrangements, and it it sounds big and grand. And uh, did you like? Uh, plan on making the album like big and sound and themes as you initially began to conceptualize it or did it just evolve to be that way? Yeah um, well I mean I I mean I just gravitate to drama mm -hmm. and so I, I kind of like those sort of big sweeping moments in songs and um, and I really love working with dynamics. So, you know, very quiet moments and then explosion. Are you a musician as well? No, uh, I, I wish I wished so. I, I wish I was. I You're a writer. Was, no. Yeah, yeah, I am a writer. Okay. Do you uh, write fiction? Uh, well, I, I write poetry, actually. Uh, oh, you write poetry. Much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so then you have a sense of, you know, when you create a, a big moment and when you create an intimate moment, you, can, you do that with poetry. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I guess you can call it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So for me, that's um, that's just something that I do naturally because I don't know, I enjoy it, and it's also really good for singing because you can, if you have a lot of dynamics in a song, you can do lots of different kinds of singing. 
Um, but mostly I just wanted to make like a 90s rock album. That's what I, that's what I started. That's what I was trying to do. You know, I just wanted to play electric guitar and rock out and have, um, yeah, guitar bass drums, but, but uh, it got a little bit bigger than that. Like, did you listen to a lot of the 90s music in the process? Yeah, I listened to, I mean, I listened to a lot of PJ Harvey. Yeah, cool. He's <laughs> and yeah, and, uh, and also like the early Radiohead, like back when they yeah. used to be a rock band, um, yeah. you know, this album, The Bends. Yeah. Such yeah. a good rock album. So, yeah. so melodic Drugs and big. dramatic. Yeah. 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 So, so I was listening to that kind of stuff. Also for the production, because the production's very, um, you know, it's, it's all recorded live in a room. And so I kind of wanted to approach the production that way and not have too much, too much programming and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you, that, like, I ask this question a lot, actually, uh, because um, the answers uh, usually prove really interesting. Uh, like, what were the easiest and hardest songs to record from the album? Ooh. Um, ooh. The hardest one was Natural Resources. Mm -hmm. You have to listen to it later, but I, yeah. it took me um, it took me a long time to figure out what the chorus would be. So it had a lot of different versions. Um, and uh, the easiest. The easiest was probably love, which is uh, the ballad, because mm -hmm. um, I I really like heartbreak ballads, and I really like writing them. And so love was love was a very easy birth. Okay. Like that, yeah. Always love a good ballad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good old ballads. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, and you stated that with shiny things. Uh, I realize now this is the first time I bring up the name of the album. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And <laughs> you stated that you like ponder upon the question of what kind of changes art can break. So yeah. So what changes do you think it can break? Let's oh man, come on. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean that's that's the question, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. the big question. I I try. I feel like. Can I can I ask you what you think? Like, do you think do you think art has power to change the world? I mean, I believe not. Maybe not as an initial process, an initial thing, initial outcome. Mm. But I believe it uh, it culminates. Uh, it can often culminate to reflect on the collective memory and more importantly like mm, yeah it can influence lifestyles like instantly you know on a personal level like mm. uh, you can listen to punk, uh, punk music as a teenager and uh, live your life accordingly which uh, I did um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and on a more collective level I guess it's uh, it's all about interaction and like moving forward with combined thoughts and stuff if that makes sense yeah yeah i think i think the one like the the magic of music i think is this idea that it brings people together yeah because it does because you you listen to your favorite bands with your friends and you talk about music and you go to concerts and it's something that is um experienced collectively and and when we talk about you know things like activism and protests and stuff this is all about the collective about a group of people and so in some ways there is a parallel um i i don't know yet if the songs themselves have the power to change opinion or open people's minds to different ideas I feel like often music is the soundtrack to something else that's already happening so it can be supportive of a movement that already exists whether or not it could create a movement by itself I, I don't I don't know about that yet I feel like I feel like the mu musicians and artists 
are more effective when they use their platform to talk about important things. I don't know if a song in and of itself has that power. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm experimenting. I'm trying to find out. I'm asking everyone. I'm very curious about this. Yeah, we should well, like we should uh, insert a note here saying what uh, do our readers, our followers, um, our viewers think. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's up to debate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm asking everyone at the moment. I'm so interested in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, wondering uh, what will come out of it. Uh, I'm I'm always uh, up for a good debate. Yeah, uh, in <laughs> arts, for for that matter, not in politics <laughs> <laughs> that much. But yeah, um, well, uh, okay. So you you are you in Berlin right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it is uh, and has been a giant sanctuary for art uh, in recent memory, and I know. You get asked about Berlin quite a lot, um, so let me ask uh, this: um, If you could form like your dream super group of artists who lived or still live in Berlin, who would you include? Oh wow! Oh shit! Of course, this question limits it with the music area, but I don't know. I mean, like obviously, you know. I mean, there was this great era in the 80s where there was um, like Nick Cave and PJ yeah. Harvey hanging out, um, you know, and a lot of really great music was made in that era. And, and, and they're, you know, heroes of mine, especially when I was younger. Um, I mean, also like, I have to say, you know, when I first, when I first came to Berlin, there was this really amazing DIY anti-folk singer songwriter scene that was just, you know, we were just so young and dirty and poor. And, uh, and it was just like this really great time where there was heaps of venues to play in, you know, and it was just before that shift, but like, because when I arrived in Berlin, it was just before they started to close all of the, the squats uh you know and and uh, and and they started to develop all the real estate and and shortly after it started the the city began to be gentrified mm -hmm. so so i i feel very lucky that i came to berlin just at the end of this era before all the um development money started to come in and, and change change the city because now if you want to see an indie band you have to go you know, right out to the edges of the city uh, where that wasn't the case before. This doesn't answer your question. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know, but it's a difficult one and we're eventually here for the chat, yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't really have like a, I don't really have like a, an era of heroes, I have to say. I just, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, you know, Ber Berlin was just a lot of fun when uh, there was less foreign investment. Yeah, that's, okay. that's not a happy answer. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Lots of crazy yeah. names, though. David Bowie, too. Man, like, my, like, uh, two yeah. of my biggest heroes are Nick Cave and David Bowie. So they all. Ah, uh, I see. To Berlin. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love David Amazing. Bowie, but I also feel like he has. I mean, he has this connection to Berlin, but but I feel like because of that, there's just so much focus on him here. Like, I feel like it's sort of almost he's so he's almost treated like a god, and mm. here because because of his connection to this city. And sometimes I think it's maybe um, a little bit too much. Like, I don't know that it's you know I don't know. I think sometimes in Berlin that people would get so excited because, you know, somebody famous lived in Kreuzberg in 1985 or something, and then they get really focused on that here. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'd say, yeah, Nick, PJ, you know, I'm not, I mean, not some, I mean, a little bit David, but I mean, I just feel like that's maybe yeah, I'm okay. not as excited by him. I have to admit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, what are your 
current plans about the album and the tour? Yeah, you have a tour, big tour coming up, right? Uh, well, the big tour is in October. I mean, yeah. actually, it was, you know, yeah, it's been planned for a while. And then obviously, COVID meant everything got pushed back, the release, mm -hmm. the tour. Um, lots of festivals over the summer. We've got some really big, big ones coming up. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the good thing is, yeah, next week the album's out, which means um, after all the promotion stuff, uh, then I can just start focusing on putting together the shows and and figuring out how what we're, how we're going to sound and what it's going to look like and and all of that stuff. Yeah. Hope we can see you here as well. Oh my god, I yeah. hope so. Are you what are you in Istanbul or, yeah, or yeah, where are you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm okay. Istanbul. What do you think about Ankara? I hear like it's a, also a good place to play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can yeah, it says it's a big city. It's a capital city. Well, Mm. Um, not um, as vivid in concerts and events as as Istanbul, but still uh, great events take place here. So why not? Uh, you should like mm. um, do a mini Turkey tour if you like. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to, and yeah, because yeah, when people, I get people who write to me on Instagram, and I feel like more often people ask me to come to Ankara than who you know ask me to come to Istanbul. So. Yeah. I'm wondering about if, if I should go there. If if they're um, asking uh, you can can play Ankara, then mm. you probably have a fan base there as well as in here. So yeah. why not? A great idea. Yeah, yeah. Think, yeah it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I need to make that happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make that happen for this year so I can come. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Uh, well. Uh, this is actually I, I don't believe how quickly the time has passed but this is <laughs> actually the last question on my list nice okay yeah. so um and it is uh, the common final question uh, it is uh, a big one. Oh, another one? Oh my god <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> okay like <laughs> I, I I feel like I somewhat challenge you with some of my questions earlier yeah, that's good yeah yeah, yeah it's good <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'll quickly ask it Choro, and I have it written here. I'll just read it. Like, okay. let's imagine we're a hundred years into the future. There yep. is a, a musician's uh, memorial park, music artist theme park, and there is a Cat Frankie memorial stone in it. If you could personally choose one of your lyrics to be written on your memorial, which do you think it would be? <gasps> oh. oh, shit. <laughs> I, 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 I like all of my lyrics. Actually, I work That's really cool hard. Yeah. I work. I work really hard on them. Like I'm really. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, mo most artists feel the same, but uh, they don't uh, like all always instantly come up with all of my lyrics they they have to they inclined to choose one so mm. uh, this is an instant this feels like an instant and honest answer on your part like straight away but still if you like to choose please do <laughs> oh god um I'm trying, I'm scanning, I'm scanning the songs in, in my head. Uh, actually, you know what? I think we could just say it, it should be shiny things and it should be the first part of shiny things because it's, yeah, darling, uh, sh darling shiny things rust with oxygen, tire of breathing which is maybe a little bit fatalistic, but you know, it's, you know, saying all shiny things come to an end, which might be a good thing to write on a memorial. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's a cool, I feel fitting answer. Oh, by the way, um, one of the artists I previously interviewed, a local band, local, local band, a punk band from here, like yeah. uh, actually edited uh, their comment later on when we shared the interview. And yeah. posted the interview. So if you like, if you have alternative answers that later come up to your mind, you can always uh, share uh, it with us. Yeah. That's very kind. I'll try not. I'll try not to do that because because okay. I don't want to make your job harder. 
Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, but if I think of something really great, then I will let you know. <laughs>